much for being here. This is really incredible. So as the state senator for Long Beach, Southeast Los Angeles, uh, but here in my hometown of Long Beach, former council member here in this great city too, um, just really, really excited to be able to provide these dollars uh, that we'll talk about very shortly. In fact, $2 million directly to the city of Long Beach for two major initiatives. But first, I would like to say my deepest gratitude to, of course, the city of Long Beach, our city prosecutor, Doug Halbert, Paul Duncan, our Homeless Services Bureau Manager, as well as Kelly Colopy, who will be leaving us shortly, but we will be thanking her so much for all of her incredible work here as uh, the Director of Health and Human Services. Connor Locke, Deputy Mayor of Housing. Mary Simmons, AOC7. Sylvester, or Duke Givens, excuse me. Care Closet. Shannon James and Melissa Christopherson, Christopherson, a beacon for him. Pam with Peer Education Community Center. John and Ken with Destiny Church Long Beach, Stacy and Sandy Latter-day Saints, Pastor Tori and John Long Beach Rescue Mission, and so many uh, more of our community members that have been here today. And if I missed you, we'll make sure we acknowledge you as well. So we're here today at MacArthur Park uh, to be able to present, again, $2 million during Monday Matters, which is a city community collaborative collaborative of resources to help those experiencing homelessness and going through the process of re-entry. Food, clothes, housing, medical, and soon to be shower resources, but more importantly, it's opportunity. For many, many folks that are here in Long Beach, but of course in, for the state of California. So two million dollars, two million of it, 1.2 million of it is going towards Long Beach Homeless Services, uh, which will undertake a pilot study program to aid seniors, some of our most vulnerable unhoused residents who are at risk of, of homelessness, uh, and ensure that this program will pair seniors who are, are at risk and subsidize their housing costs. $750,000 of the $2 million will also be going to Long Beach Reentry Services Program. This was an in initiative brought forward by City Prosecutor Doug Halbert uh, that will provide reentry re services that will target clients who have been incarcerated for extended periods of time in the prison system. And these services will include job placement, housing assistance, and mental health coaching. Uh, again, I want to thank the folks that are behind me here both our city prosecutor and uh, health and human services department, they are the impetus for actually bringing this $2 million back home to Long Beach in support, of course, of, of our community, but also in conjunction with the incredible nonprofits that are here today. Government cannot do this alone. As a state of California, we were headed into a budget deficit. In fact, we're in, in one now. We're trying to figure out what that looks like. But nonetheless, we were able to provide these dollars but it was the hard work of the folks that are on the ground every single day here in Central Long Beach and across the city supporting our homeless residents, supporting those that are the most vulnerable in our communities. So I want to thank everybody and let's give them a big round of applause. I can't say thank you enough. I've probably said it 20 more times and I'll continue to say that. And this is hard work. You know, in the state of California, we've got um, nearly 200,000 individuals who are in some sort of incarceration scenario. Um, we've got, a, a, you know, hundreds of thousands of individuals who are homeless, but those that are homeless are those that are currently homeless. There are folks that are on the brink of homelessness, as we know, as well. And in working with um, our city, as well as many of our nonprofits on the ground, I've actually gone to some of our underpasses with my friend Duke Givens um, and have connected with some of these individuals who are experiencing homelessness. It is a dire situation. And this is a place, this is California, where we call the fourth largest economy. We shouldn't have that anymore. And this is why this $2 million is so, so important. So with that, I'm going to pass it on to my uh, incredible friend and colleague and city prosecutor, Doug Halbert, who will provide additional remarks. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Senator Gonzalez. Uh, my name is Doug Halbert. I have the, the privilege and the honor of serving Long Beach as city prosecutor. You know, a, a fair and effective criminal justice system is one where people return from the system better than they went into it. Unfortunately, that doesn't always happen. And people that have underlying conditions that are not addressed often reoffend. In fact, statistically, two out of three will be returned to jail or prison 
in the next three years if we don't have a strategy in place to intervene and provide services. I'm very proud uh, to be working with Senator Gonzalez to find a solution. And she didn't mention it, so I will mention the work that she's done before she was senator. Because when she was on the city council here in Long Beach, she actually oversaw a process that we referred to as a violence prevention strategy that, that created a vision for Long Beach that involved getting involved before people became incarcerated, helping with mental health services, substance abuse services, housing services, to prevent the conditions that might lead to, to uh, people being incarcerated. So I wanna thank her for her work as a city council member and now as a state senator, what she's really doing is making sure that we have the resources to see that vision through. Um, Long Beach really is a model when it comes to uh, a city or a county uh, taking uh, steps to engage in a, a strategy that's comprehensive. We are aligning the criminal justice sector with the healthcare sector to make sure that there are opportunities for people to go into services and treatment rather than into, into jail. I think if we can do this here in Long Beach, and we can do it here in Long Beach, we can become a model or a beacon for other cities and counties throughout the country that have similar problems uh, that we have here in Southern California. So I, I wanted to just sing the praises of our, of our state senator just for a moment. I wanna thank her for her long-term leadership on this issue and for all of her hard work on behalf of our, our city here uh, in Long Beach. So thank you, Senator. And I wanna thank everyone out else for coming out here today. There are so many people here that do the, the hard work in our city, that do the reach out uh, to the people that are in, in need. They do it directly, uh, both as part of the health department, uh, they provide services, and then the nonprofit community. We have so many people here that are leaders in, nonprofit, uh, in the nonprofit sector, and they do the work that only they can do. There's only so much the government can do, and we actually need uh, these charities, these nonprofits, these religious, faith-based organizations to step up like they've been doing if we're going to tackle this problem. So with that, I just want to thank you all for coming. And uh, I, there's another speaker that's going to be coming up here now, Paul Duncan, who's the Long Beach Homeless Services Bureau Manager, to provide some remarks. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. So again, my name is Paul Duncan. I am the Homeless Services Bureau Manager, so I oversee uh, both the direct work that the city is providing, uh, such as our mobile access center behind me, and as well as overseeing the uh, funding that we receive in and contract out to our nonprofit providers. Uh, so thank you, Senator Gonzalez. Uh, we're very excited uh, to be able to bring in this money uh, and really to look at an area as we look at um, what's been happening around homelessness as we look at the emergency proclamation here locally within Long Beach. Um, we see a number of different things. We can see the need to address uh, and provide services and housing to the people that are currently experiencing homelessness, uh, but we see new people becoming homeless every day. Uh, as we look at some of our data, we are seeing a considerable number of new people uh, every month that we've not encountered before. So really we need to look upstream uh, on what we're able to do when we look at our data. One area that we see the largest increase of people newly becoming homeless is our older adults over age 65. Uh, we know as people retire, their income becomes fixed um, while rents continue to go up. So we are seeing uh, a considerable number of older adults that had been able to afford their rent at one point, but are now having to make difficult choices to be able to meet their rent. And sometimes they're just not able to meet that rent. So uh, with the funding we're receiving in, we are going to uh, try piloting a older adult shallow subsidy. Um, this has also been done within the County of Los Angeles, uh, as well as in a few other regions. And really the goal is uh, to provide some time and some support. So uh, people that are enrolled into the program will receive $500 a month to support their rent uh, while working with them to get onto our affordable older adult hou uh, affordable housing lists. So uh, we have a number of different projects that are opening up within the city. Uh, just right over across the street, we have Wellspring uh, up on PCH and MLK. Uh, we have Heritage Gardens, so there's a number of older adult affordable housing 
projects opening up. We have a number that are already existing. The goal is to get people linked to that and to provide them time to get to a place where they are going to be able to afford and sustain the rent. So uh, this is key in keeping our most vulnerable people off the street uh, and in a place where uh, they can maintain their stability. So we're very excited to be able to uh, bring in the funds and uh, provide the support to those older adults. So uh, with that, I'll hand it back to the Senator. We've got one other special guest, and how could I say no to her? Our Director of Health and Human Services, Kelly Colby. Good morning, everybody. You know, I've, uh, I've been here for 10 years, and we've talked a whole lot about prevention in homeless services. And prevention is one of the key areas that there is less investment, right? We focus so much on immediate service. And so I really want to do a big shout out to our senator for investing in a like, complete and utter focus on prevention. In this case, $1.25 million is a big chunk of funding for this city to be able to do that. And the fact that we'd be able to um, serve our older adult population, which is also our largest growing population of people experiencing homelessness, is such a wonderful connection. So we do fully appreciate the Senator's support and the ability to focus on prevention specifically. And as we move forward within our city, our goal is prevention, right? It's, it's so much harder when people have been on the street for a long time to support. The more and more that we can do to, to prevent homelessness, the more impacts we'll have. That's the investment in housing, it's the investment in services, it's the forthcoming investment in mental health, substance use services, all those pieces together. And so I do, uh, the Senator has been a very big supporter of ours. Uh, you may recall that recently, I think it was just last year, that we uh, received $4 million, right, to be able to support our services as well. So I wanted for all of you to hear our, my deep gratitude and to see your appreciation for the Senator's office and our work together, and also that we were able to really uplift prevention in this uh, in this service opportunity. Uh, with that, this is my probably my last press conference for the city of Long Beach. I want to thank you all for your support and for all the work together, and I look forward to uh, keeping track of Long Beach moving forward and anything I can do to support. Thank you. We're very saddened by that, but we're very thankful for her incredible work, um, and I know we'll certainly acknowledge her, that work uh, very shortly here in the city. So I uh, also would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge um, and extend gratitude to Mayor Rex Richardson as well as Councilwoman Suli Saro, whose office is here, as well as Vice Mayor Cindy Allen, who I know have been incredible um, advocates for this work as well. So with that, I'd like to bring up all of our um, nonprofits that are here today to uh, have to take a picture with us and also to um, provide any remarks if you'd like to, but um, mo more importantly, to just come up here, be congratulated, and I want to say thank you from the bottom of our hearts for all the groundwork that you're doing every single day to ensure that the city of Long Beach um, remains uplifted, that every single person, regardless of their zip code, remains uplifted. So come on up, um, and then we'll take any questions if media has any questions. If not, we'll continue with our photo op. Okay.